Welcome back my fantastic friends. Now what we're going to paint today is something quite unusual and something I've never attempted before, especially on camera. Now on this canvas I'm coating it in liquid white. And what we've got, a little half inch paintbrush and I'm going to mix in a little bit of blue. We've got phthalo blue, cerulean blue, maybe even a bit of Prussian blue, all mixed on the brush. So when we go up here onto the canvas we're going to get different variants of blues. Now. What we don't want to paint is a big flat dead block of colour, so we're just swirling a nice little bit of area, leave some white spots. Because we've got liquid white on there, when we come back to blend on this canvas, we'll get all sorts of indications and a bit of action in the sky, and that's what we're trying to achieve on this quite unusual painting, quite a patriotic painting. Okay, so down here we're going to have some water, and if you've guessed from the thumbnail, this is going to be the Union flag. A lot of people refer it to the, the Union Jack, but I believe the Jack is on a boat. The Union flag is what's flown you know, above states of, you know, houses of parliament and palaces and, you know, what we fly when we're feeling patriotic. Okay, so we'll just blend all this together just with a nice dry big brush and just bring it all together and that way we create a nice varied sky just like so okay on a fan brush we're going to load the fan brush full of red paint this is cadmium red paint a nice strong red paint you know and we're going to work on on the, the parts of the cross this is the parts which will reflect St. Patrick's cross okay so we've got the uh, some parts of the cross of St Andrew and now we're working on St Patrick's cross and we're just going to wisp them in there so we start at the top corners try and leave a little bit of whiteness between the the blue and the red but it doesn't matter if it merges into each other remember this is just my interpretation of, uh, of, a, of the Union flag in, in landscape form in landscape art form okay so back in through the water so we'll put some red and again with this big dry brush we're just going to blend all that you just want to take away the brush strokes merge everything together smooth everything out but again because we've we've missed areas out we're going to get we're going to get a varied sky and a varied water so there we go now let's get some blue paint let's work really closely on this solitaire cross of st andrew so little of fan brush this is a number three fan brush i think it is and we're just gonna load it full of paint this is prussian blue really nice warm strong blue and we're going to work on some little evergreen trees that are far 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 away you can't really tell individual trees there we go so if you like this painting folks please leave me a like and a comment hit the notification bells and if you're not subscribed give me a subscription it's uh, it's free and it does help me out and if you are subscribed i appreciate that thank you a lot okay so down in the bottom here just under these trees we're just going to beat them and mist out the base of them and then they can come back in and just look what we're doing we're just going to add a few just a few little trees little evergreen trees a little bit closer than the ones behind that will give a little sense of depth to the painting it's very hard working with a limited palette and a design which is not really meant for landscape painting and again back to the big dry brush i do keep drying it between the you know cleaning it and drying it between between applications we're just going to beat the base of that okay so let's work on the cross of st george okay and i did do a a video of st george a few weeks back and uh, and that was all right the shorts video was quite all right all right so we'll just put in this is the same cadmium red paint on a large fan brush i like using fan brushes because they they really give a little bit of you know like life to, to 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 the hills that you're trying to paint and again we're just going to beat the base of that just mist it up 
just mist it up just down at the base and when we come and put another leg in front of that there'll be a separator okay I've got a little round brush here it's about possibly about 12 mil in diameter and I just tap in some of this red paint we're using red and a tiny bit of a Liz and crimson now these are oil paints I don't know if I mentioned that but we're using oil paints here so they are quite versatile and because we've got the white on the canvas already we can blend color up here but what I'm doing is just putting some little bushes and shrubs and shrubbery <laughs> down here now that one looks like a little miniature bonsai oak tree doesn't it okay so under this under this land here we're just gonna have some reflection so a tiny bit of the red paint on a little one inch brush and we're just going to pull straight down just straight down and we don't want to take too much up remember what we're working towards is trying to create the union flag we'll just pull straight down and then eventually we'll just blend all that into what would be the water the lake the sea whatever we want to call it straight down and then gently across and that will give that illusion of reflections in the water okay so now we've got the red paint blocked in we can start working on where this other part of the blue flag the blue part of the flag is so we'll just come back in here with the blue paint on the paintbrush and just drop in a little bit of reflection and again all we need to do now is just blend that into the sea or water whatever we're going to call it just blend away just nice and easy nice and smooth right let's put a water line in so we've got some liquid white on the edge of the palette here and we cut straight across and right on the very edge of the knife right on the very tip that's where this paint is and we'll put a little water line in now if you've painted with me before you'll you'll know this many many times i've said this try and keep your water lines or your palette knife parallel to the base of the uh, of the canvas if if you don't you'll end up looking like your water's running straight off the canvas and that's <laughs> that's not desirable okay so this is a big rounded brush and again we're going to load this with the with the crimsons and the reds and we'll put in the middle part of the flag all right so we'll come up here and we'll drop in a nice little lump of land just there just like so and we'll just tap 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 away let the canvas take what it want and leave us with the rest pull down a little bit again this is going to be into the water so you'll need some reflections right so on top of that little bit of land we're going to put some trees so into the crimsons and the reds and then one side of this little paintbrush we're going to take through a little bit of a pinky color and so we've got crimson on one side pink on another that's a double loaded brush and when we come back to the canvas and we paint as tree trunk what we're going to get is a highlight and a shadow in one stroke really simple to achieve pretty sneaky yeah so there you go so this is obviously one of the main parts of st george's cross so we need the other part so it can be a reflection so we just pull that down and it doesn't have to be perfect the reflections don't have to be perfect okay so we'll give we'll give this tree a little bit of an arm a little bit of a thicker leg as well really beef him up just like so so same way there just like that and then straight down into the water a little bit of reflection as well that's how we do that okay same brush that we used before the rounded brush loaded the same way with the same colors and we're just going to tap in just some foliage so this is the other part of the st george's cross and we can just make this as wide as we want oh <laughs> obviously in reason we don't we don't want it all over the canvas but uh, you know what we're trying to achieve folks just some nice indications of some leaves and foliage on these trees here 
and it's very difficult using a limited palette to get the effects you want but but once you've done that you can work with anything when you go back to a full palette full of color you'll be spoiled for choice okay so these reflections again with this big dry brush we pull straight down straight down and then lightly across just like that and that will give the indication of some water all right so we're thinning this red paint now this is cadmium red paint and a little bit of thin oil on the rigger brush or the script liner brush it's got really long bristles and that thin paint we can come up here and we can start adding some little branches that are sneaking between the foliage of these trees you can add as many as you want or as few as you want it's completely and utterly up to you there we go now i'm painting outside so so the the sun does have a little bit of effect on the uh, on the painting, but, but nothing we can't handle. Nothing we can't handle. So a few finishing touches here with the with the fan brush and the red paint. Put some humps and bumps on this land here. Give it a little bit more depth. What I'm doing is hitting that thin pink colour we made for the tree trunks, and I'm just just tiny amount of highlight on the highlight side of the trees just on the foliage a little bit on the trunk not much we don't need much there we go and again back to the waterline there and that sets it all off there we go so just a little bit more waterline down here and if you, if you enjoyed this one Please, please give me a like, thumbs up, subscribe, notification bells. Spread, spread the word. Let's get it going. Let's get it going, folks. Let's sign this little one. Right down here, thin red paint again. On the liner brush, just like so. Rule Britannia. Happy days.